Hello and welcome to part 6 of the BlackBerry 10 Cascades SDK tutorial and this time I'm going to take a look at threading um, how to use threads with um, Qt and QML in Cascades and on the BlackBerry 10 platform. But before we go into threading, um, there is a new SDK available which you can download via help update native SDK and there is also a new um, simulator available. Now to start with we have our calendar app again here, our stacked event viewer and we call reload events in our um, method. So you see there is now two events. Um, it's not anymore as many events as I had before because it's a new simulator so you have to put on also the new events for testing. Um, and you really don't know how long this method will run because you don't know how many events are there and this method will block as long as you have the events loading though actually this method could block our app and for making it better in our app we can put this method in an extra thread and before I go into editing the code and introducing QThread to our app I'd like to take a look at the um, documentation of QThread. Um, here we have the example of the QThread documentation for Cascades. And down here we have the example. Um, and here we see it's um, basically the idea to derive a thread from the class, a class from QThread, and to use run in this thread. A class then which is virtual. Um, interestingly if you open the documentation for Qt5 um, it's not stating this it's showing a different approach which I would prefer when working with threads. Now the reason to use this pattern instead of deriving from Qt thread because um, this is your local thread handle to the thread and actually this class is not a thread it has a thread and this worker class we want to be a thread it is a thread and therefore we derive it from Q object so that we can access it via slots and signals and then we can um, define our own signals and slots which we can communicate with the thread in a thread safe manner. After we created a new instance of our class, we simply say to thread, um, we want to connect the signal started to do work and we want to, to connect the signal finished to delete later. And then we move our thread object to the thread and start the thread. Now if we go back to our code, um, we will need to um, re-implement reload events in a different class and to have a signal which is emitted when it's loaded and to have uh, a slot which will run in the thread. And I think we're going to change the, the interface a little bit so that um, a thread for the next events and a thread for the last event runs so that we, when the next events are finished, already can display them in the, in the UI and not have to wait for the, for the uh, previous events. So I have prepared the class which will do the work in the thread now and the interface it's actually pretty simple. We have a constructor which will take the search parameter and um, we have the slot which will do the work actually and we have a signal which will be emitted after everything is loaded and which will contain the queue list of event details which we then will be able to, to um, hand over to the model. 
and this is the implementation part now. Um, it's fairly easy. We get again the calendar service, we get the result type, we get our event list. Um, this time we have the parameter already handed over by the constructor, so we don't need to care about anything here. And if this is successful, we just simply um, convert the list into the event detail list and um, we call events loaded um, or we, we emit events loaded so that in the other thread we now can uh, hand over the list to the actual model. So this is the code which will run inside the thread and let's take a look how to start a thread. Um, this is a method which will do this and first we create our search parameter set the right search parameters create the event worker which is a class which will run inside the thread um, we then connect the signal events loaded to the slot set next events which is part of our application class um, then we create a queue thread variable which has the parent um, of the queue of our application class um, we connect started to do work and finished to delete later of worker and then we um, move worker to our newly created thread and then we start the thread and when our method has run through here we see that we emit events loaded with a list of created queue objects which in our case then will land in set next events and here we do copy now this list this is important because queue object keeps track in which thread it was created and which thread it belongs to and hence we need to copy the data in our main thread now and then add it to our um, next event model. Now let's quickly run this in the simulator and if we wouldn't have copied the list into the main thread here which is then so if we wouldn't copy the elements here um, then we would see the behavior that the application would crash now when I trigger next events. The second time you then display the next events it will crash and that is because the, um, the actual items behind which are displayed would be then destroyed as we um, set the, the, the worker slot of delete later after the thread is finished and then by the next turn it will be deleted. Now our current implementation makes direct use of QThread which in our case I think is okay though because we, we will not have a lot of threads running but starting a new thread will always have a certain overhead and if you have a, a lot of tasks which will needed to be running in a separate thread than your main thread and the cascade thread uh, for rendering then you should make use of queue thread pool which offers um, a class called queue runnable where you then derive from your task which should run in this uh, thread pool and you override run um, where you um, simply then do the work which you want to do in the thread and then hand this instance of hello world task or your, your task to the global instance of the thread pool and um, start this task within the already started threads within the thread pool. And the advantage of this is that the thread pool will always keep the threads and therefore we have not the overhead of um, needing to start each time our a new thread when we have a new task which we need to run in the background 
and if you have often the pattern that in your app you will need to update certain things from the net or you will need to, to run certain things in the background for performance reasons a thread pool can be a very good alter uh, alternative to running your own threads and you'll find under threads uh, documentation about thread support in Qt um, it's far too much to cover in, 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 in this series um, there's a lot of classes of course which you can use for threading in Qt there's a, for example a mutex class if you need to uh, protect certain resources for multiple threads um, there are lockers for reading, for, run, for writing, there's Qrunnable as we have seen um, Xamarin and um, Qt Concurrent as we already have already seen so this is the threading interface which you should use with cascades if you want to use threading in your app and this is the end for this episode of the tutorial um, there's far more stuff you can read about threads and Qt um, very interesting topic I'll be next week at the BB10 Jam Europe in Amsterdam and maybe I can meet some of um, you and discuss some of the issues we have with um, app development on BB10 would be very cool.